Has the gravity of Rebirth hit you yet? Yes, it has. The more I think about the ending, the more I realize that it's so much more depressing than the original. <laughs> it's like so much darker and more depressing than the original. It's ridiculous how sad it is. It's such a sad ending. Like, it's so disturbing and uh, and sad. It's just an incredibly sad ending. Uh, but I like that. I like that. It's the second entry in a trilogy. It should be that way. The second entry is always the sad one. It should always end on, like, a really somber note. You should be like, oh, shit. Like, this is not going to be good. Like, the start of part three is going to be probably pretty messed up. Probably. I don't know. We'll see how quickly. If they go right to the northern crater, then then maybe it won't be messed up for too long. I think it all depends on where they go in the beginning of part three. Dragon Ghoul, how you doing? Welcome in. But I don't want to jump right to the ending just yet. I do want to kind of like watch a few things in chapter 13 as well. I want to rewatch re the, the Wall of Murals. I want to rewatch uh, Aerith's dialogue um, before, or sorry, after the trials. Isn't Northern Crater part one just before the original ends? No. Not exactly. They they uh, they head toward the Northern Crater and they do the, uh, the Whirlwind Maze ratchet. Uh, and they could place that not too far away if they wanted to. They could they could move some things around and have the whirlwind maze come up pretty quickly if they wanted. I think it all depends on how they want to organize the story. All right, yeah, so I don't want to jump too far ahead. Like, the water burial and all that kind of stuff is the thing that I've really wrestled with as well, but I've come to terms with why they didn't show it, and I'm really excited for when they will show it, and I definitely... I think I know when they will show it, and I think it's going to hit really hard. If anything, I think it might hit even harder when they do show it. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. I thought the whisper part was the maze. No, no, we haven't gotten to the whirlwind maze yet. I do think they'll have Bone Village in the next one, but I think it'll be uh, like a side thing. I think it'll probably be something you can go and do as like an excavation mini game kind of thing. I don't think it's going to be a major part of the story. I, I don't think it needs to be. Its its purpose was to get the Lunar Harp in the original. They didn't do that in this one. It's fine that they didn't, honestly. It, it was better for pacing reasons. So do they even need that Bone Village? No. Do I think they will? Yes, just because they've said they're going to have every location in the trilogy. So they'll have it, I think. I just don't think it's going to be a big deal. So I don't think that was supposed to be the Whirlwind Maze. I think it was supposed to be reminiscent of the Whirlwind Maze, but I do not think that was the Whirlwind Maze. I think we will still see, like, where where the clones are heading to. Like, I still think there's there's some... There needs to be closure with that storyline. We haven't seen it all come to fruition. So I think the Whirlwind ma Maze is where they kind of close off that thread. Wutai won't be optional, agreed. I think Fort Condor is going to be a big deal in the next one. Um, under Underwater submarine stuff will be big in the next one, I think for sure. Um, I think the proto-relic stuff will kind of be the Knights of the Round stuff in the next one. I, think it, I don't think Knights of the Round is going to be optional. I think they'll find some way to make a really cool mission out of that. That'll be uh, very, feel very important. What dish did you last Fort Condor battle when you gather the big materia? Uh, that's that's disc two, Ratchet. All the huge materia stuff, or now it's called, um, what do they call it? It had like an M uh, name in front of it, right? Um, that's all, all going to be in the next game, but that was disc two in the original. Disc three was pretty much just the ending in the original game. In the original, they used the Junon Cannon to get into the Northern Crater, right? Yes. At the very end, yes. It, when, when it has the shield over it, yes. At the very, very, very end. But we're getting into some spoiler territory. So we're talking about part three as well here, you guys. Keep that in mind. But like Cloud handing the Black Materia over in like the Northern Crater, that that's something that could happen pretty quickly if they want to do it. How big do you think the third game will be? I think it will be less about big scale exploration, and I think it'll be more about epic set piece moments. Part three is going to be much more linear in, in that sense. You're going to have access to the whole world. Don't get me wrong. You're going to have access to the airship. So there'll still be exploration. I think, you know, obviously we're going to go to areas we haven't gone to yet. But I think 
I think part three will actually feel a little bit more like part one in a lot of ways. This part two was the exploration part of the trilogy. Oh. Oh. Who's messing with my lights? No, Sferatu. Okay, so let's uh, jump over and watch a few things. We're going to jump in, you guys. Spoiler alert for uh, Seven Rebirth here. We're going to jump into some chapter stuff. Um, let's start by kind of going through some of the stuff in the Temple of the Ancients. So I think what I really want to look at are around the trials. That's like the one thing I, I really want to look at. And then like the end of the chapter um, with some of the craziness that happens. All right. So we have Sifrath. This is right before the trials, right? Don't be afraid. It's easy. All right. So we have the trials after this. Cloud's acting like a complete dick, right? All right. So I don't think we're going to watch the trials. I don't think we need to see that again. That was just depressing as all... I'll get out. And it's basically an expansion on the original, so nothing nothing too crazy there. Right? This stuff was this stuff this was traumatizing. This was borderline traumatizing, you guys. I can't watch this again. Okay. I wanna watch this though. No, I think it'll be I think it'll be huge in its length. Wolf Yee, but I think it's gonna feel more linear like part one was. Like I think it'll be like a hundred hours like part you know, two, not forty hours like part one. It, but it'll feel more linear. Just two sides of the same coin. Our bodies may disappear when we die, but our spirits still live on. We return to the planet, rejoin the life stream, and in time give rise to new life. In time, yeah. I get it. I really do. Knowing that the people we love aren't really gone, it doesn't make it any easier to let them go. It still hurts. So we can't just think of it as a homecoming. Because it's not that simple. We have all experienced pain. We all have our regrets. What we've done, what's been done to us, that's set in stone. The past is forever. But the future, even if it has been written, can be changed. It's true that the pain and the anger we carry can make us stronger. But at what cost? What toll does it take? I believe true strength doesn't come from any of that. True strength comes from our ability to forgive. To forge ahead in the hope of making things right. It comes from ourselves. So focus on the future, not the past. Do that. And not even Sephiroth will be able to stand in our way. I feel like that... That feels important, that part right there. Not even him. Because it seems to connect to what Sephiroth was talking about, as we'll see in chapter 14. Like, Sephiroth, like, literally gets off on on Torment, right? And he talks specifically about, like, some of the things she was mentioned, like, the kind of fear leads to anger. Anger he's a, leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Like, he, he kind of, like, talks about how he, he kind of feeds off of that, it seems, right? And Aerith here is talking about letting that all go. Now, like, the whole forgiveness thing, like, I wonder how literal she's talking about that, though. Like, is she just talking about, like, not giving in to what Sephiroth wants? Or is she literally, like, talking about, like, love? Like, fight him with love. Like, I, I don't know how literal that's supposed to be taken there. But it is, it does feel like she's trying to say, like, we can't give in to what Sephiroth wants, which is for us 
to be burdened by our past. To be, but you, he just needs a hug, right? Is that what the ending's gonna be? Everybody just hug Sephiroth. He just needs a hug. Um, right. Well, literally in this one too. Like Aerith's whispers are white. Sephiroth's whispers are black. Um, now, when we talk about that Aerith, we, I feel like we need to come up with names for these. For me, I've been calling it 4D Aerith. That's like my name for the Aerith that comes at the very end and fights along Cloud. To me, that's 4D Aerith. That is, I say 4D Aerith for two reasons. One, she's playing 4D chess. Two, she's 4D in that she has the ability to travel between dimensions in the same way that Sephiroth does. So she is 4D Aerith, we'll call her. Um, I call, let's call this Aerith just Rebirth Aerith. I, I guess. I feel like that makes the most sense. Um, and then I, I would also talk about 4D Aerith might be the same as this Aerith, but there's also OG Aerith. Um, 5D. Yeah, I mean, but we're going to go with 4D just because I prefer it because 4D chess, you know. So let's go with 4D. 4D Aerith. And then there's OG Aerith, but is OG Aerith 4D Aerith? I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to go that far. Um, it not, I don't think it really matters that much in the end. All you really need to know is there is an Aerith that has the same ability as Sephiroth. There is an Aerith out there. Sephiroth is trying to find that Aerith. He knows that she's hiding within dimensions. He finds out what dimension she's in uh, as he says, oh, you've been hiding here. So we know, we know that Sephiroth is trying to find specifically that Aerith, but it also seems like he's going around and just murdering all Aeriths. He might be. Like, he's just going around dimension to dimension, like, oh, I'm just going to kill all the Aeriths, just in case. It kind of feels like there might be that kind of thing going on as well. Um, Cameron, we just got started. We just got started. We're kind of like listening to Aerith's dialogue here, just because I thought it was important um, about how she feels they should fight Sephiroth. Um, we're going to get to the end of part three and find out the whole thing has been constructed by the dog from Silent Hill 2. Awesome. Let's go. I would call OG7 the original Gaia that contains all those pocket dimensions. Yes. Well, really, like, OG Gaia was what we were experiencing in Remake, but Sephiroth was trying as hard as he possibly could to change, right? Sephiroth was was fighting against the Whispers in OG Gaia to to change things from the original timeline. And... And, and, of course, the Whispers are there to course correct it and try and keep it on OG Gaia. And, of course, we defeat Fate at the end of the game. What's up? Okay. Tell her I will. Okay. I will. Tell her I will. Um, so, defeat Fate, of course, that unlocks pocket realities. So, that's what causes it in the first place. By us defeating the Arbiter of Fate in Remake, we unlock the ability for pocket dimensions. And the entire purpose of Zack in this game is sort of fruitless in a way if if you already knew about the timelines. Because a lot of us already knew about this, right? A lot of us were arguing for four years that there were timelines. Some people were saying there weren't. I was one of the people that was like, yes, there's obviously multiple timelines. But... For people like myself that was like 100% sure there were timelines, Zack's purpose in the game actually isn't very important. Like, I didn't need Zack in this game at all, really. And he I, he's kind of my, my least favorite part of this game, just because I feel like he breaks up the story that I want to see play out. Because I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, you're in the, the realities that are branching off, and those are just going to get trimmed at the end anyway. Um, so, they, so they just... They just go away. It was almost like Zack is destined to die, but maybe not because we see him at the very end. And which timeline is he in at the end? That's a big question. What timeline is he in? The, the flowers are blooming at the very end, the timeline Zack is in. So that means he's not in Terrier Stamp timeline. Does that mean he's in Beagle Stamp? Which means he's in our main party's timeline? That could be kind of crazy, but we'll get to that later on. Um but I, I will admit, like, the Zack stuff is, like, my least favorite part of the game just because I didn't need to have that explained to me. Like, I already believed in timelines. But, of course, it isn't until the very, very end of the game that Sephiroth does finally explain timelines. Are you right. finished? Are you finished? What an asshole! What an asshole. Okay, so I want to watch this. Alright, so we get the Wall of Murals. I thought this was a really cool sequence here. The mural chamber. I know, which I think speaks to how his his role in the game really isn't that important, Ratchet. The fact that you can turn his portion off shows that it the only purpose of it is the first playthrough to show timelines and how they work.
One thing I'll say real quick too is I, I really love that this Aerith is is not sort of I want I don't want to say all knowing, but is it's completely out of the know, let's just say. Like the 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 Aerith in remake is being influenced by 4D Aerith and is be, being given knowledge, I think, by 4D Aerith. And that is why she's able to sort of see some things a, a, about to happen. Like you can obviously tell in Remake that Aerith knows the plate is going to collapse. She wants to believe that they can stop it, but she kind of knows that it's going to collapse, right? Because she has some knowledge of things that are going to come. But the Whispers take that all away from her at the end. Sephiroth, I think, takes it away from her probably at the end, which is why the materia goes clear, I think think that's the only thing I can come up with we'll talk about that later but I think we talked about it on Wednesday that it seems like the reason the materia goes clear is because she had her memories taken away right so um I like that this Aerith feels very OG Aerith in in Rebirth because she had that taken away from her and also I no longer believe at all that these are the game. These are humans. These are humans that were manipulated by Genova. I don't believe at all that these are the gay. They don't look like the gay, obviously. They're just humans. Real quick, um, to respond to you, Ratchet, yes, they when they leave Midgar, but it it has to do with what's happening when they leave Midgar. The they were cheating, according to the planet, according to fate, they were cheating, right? Like they weren't supposed to have that knowledge, so it was taken away from them. Like they're not allowed to. So that is why both uh, Aerith and and Red Thirteen lose that knowledge what i think is interesting though is that marlene retains it probably because she is brought to another timeline or at least her consciousness is is brought to another timeline um so i thought that was kind of interesting that marlene's able to retain that and red 13 and Aerith are not Yeah, it is 100% confirmed by the creators that 10 is linked to 7. They are in the same universe. It's very loose connection, but it's there. This music's so good. I like here that the Cetra are once again portrayed as... A little bit shades of gray, right? They did what they thought was right to protect the planet. But it doesn't mean the things that they had to do were clean. <laughs> you know what I mean? You didn't know that chaos? Yeah, it's, it's confirmed that 7 and 10 are connected universally. Welcome in. Right, Ratchet, exactly. Like they 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 did what they thought was right to protect the planet. Obviously, the Gi had access to the nuclear bomb. They had the atom bomb. Right? Like so the Centra have let them use it? No, like the Gi wanted the Gi wanted rest, right? They just wanted to sleep, finally. But that doesn't mean that they should be allowed to if it, if it destroys the entire planet. And I'm assuming Red 13 will find a way to help the Gi in Part 3. He promised that he would. 
No promises to keep, though. So this is really interesting here that Genova takes on the form of an angelic appearance at the very end here. It was more so Genova that killed the Cetra than humans. Alpha. So there you go. Like, taking on that angelic form, which is very reminiscent of the way Jesse looks in the Loveless play. And the soldiers look like the soldiers in the Loveless play. So that's all very interesting as well. The 7 and 10 are related. Yeah, Bebop. Yeah, that is confirmed. The, the soldiers were under the influence of Genova, and Genova also infiltrated the Cetra's ranks as well, like the actual Cetra. Like, they say that Genova took on the form of their loved ones. Genova is a calamity from the, from the skies. Like, she came down on a meteor. Ratchet. As did the Gi, probably. The Gi might have come down with Genova, for all we know, because the Gi have been around as long as the Cetra. So, um, they, they, both Genova and... And the geek came from another planet. Calamity from the sky, yeah. The reunion. When our adversary's scattered malignancy shall converge to plague the planet once more. So Genova, all the scattered Genova coming together. That's that's OG reunion, right? OG reunion is all the scattered Genova cells, all the Genova parts all coming together um, to play the planet, planet once more. But is that still happening in, in Rebirth slash Part 3 at all? You know, Sephiroth has adopted reunion to mean something completely different now. That is what happened in OG. That's what happened in the whirlwind maze in OG, Ratchet. All of the all the black robes coming together for reunion. Bringing bringing all of Genova together. That that's what the reunion is. But reunion here as Sephiroth describes it, his reunion is a reunion of worlds. It's a merging of worlds. It's a confluence of worlds. He's taken all the timelines and merging them into one so that he can absorb as much energy as possible. He, he feeds off of timelines dying, right? Like, that's what he does. He, he puts timelines in the worst possible shape they can be in. That's why he influences Rufus to start a war with, uh, with what the hell is his name? Um, uh, Glenn whatever i don't really know that character that well but that seems like what was going on like rufus was pissed off as hell right rufus was super pissed off because i think i think he got tricked labrock yeah i think he got tricked like he, he uh why he got tricked i don't know like you shot the guy in the back like why did you think this was glenn labrock again but he did he got he got fooled um into starting a war with the wutai putting the world in a state of war because that's what Sephiroth wants. He wants all these timelines to be falling apart. He wants pain. He wants suffering. He wants he wants all this, right? So if he takes all of these broken or, or failing timelines, timelines that have rifts in the sky and are, are ready to die, if he merges them all into, into one in some like synchronicity, does that mean that he's able to take even more energy from all of that? Uh, I don't, I don't know for sure, but it seems like that's what Sephiroth is going for, is this idea of, of more power from all of it being one, I guess. Um, that's kind of what like my mind's at right now. I don't know. There's no such thing as forever Sephiroth there will be, right? Yeah. W right, and that's why Sephiroth was pissed, Bebop. That's why Sephiroth was pissed there. That's why he throws the blood in his face and is like, you, you can't see with clouded eyes. He's like, yo, dude, wake, wake the hell, hell up. Um, I just killed your girlfriend. Um, I'm going to say girlfriend because she's my girlfriend. So deal with it. Although, like, come on. Like, the way, way Cloud was acting in that final scene like there was so much love there was so much love there you can call whatever kind of love you want to call it i don't know there was there was so much love there and so much pain there um so i 100 agree he, he he wanted cloud to accept that but cloud cloud will not and we'll talk about that later
Because I think there's multiple facets to that. I don't think it's as simple as... I don't think it's as simple as a delusion. I think there's more to it than just a delusion. But I prefer that side of it. I like... I, I think it feels very cloud. I think it feels very faithful to the original for it to be delusion. I'll finally admit it. Cloud really loved Aerith. It's about damn time. He loved her. You don't have to call it romantic love, but oh my god, did he love her. Yes. I think there was something romantic to it, but they never got to realize that. But that's what the date was. We'll talk about that in a moment because we're about to see it. But that's what the date was. That OG, I feel like, I think 40 Aerith is OG Aerith because, because of that date. Alright, so this is where they talk about the materia. Let's back up here a little bit. Oh my god, this is the most messed up Cloud's ever been. That's why I was saying this is so much more depressing and sad than OG was. Cloud is so fucked up in Rebirth. By the end of Rebirth, like, I never thought they would make him this bad. So they said something about, like, pouring, like, all of their bitterness and hatred and, like, all this into the Materia. Like, again, like, the idea that, the idea that, like, Materia is, like, emotions and memories, right? So this is, like, all of the, the bitterness and hatred that they've built up p potentially for a thousand years. Who knows, who knows how long? All of that bitterness and all that hatred and anger was all uh, just manifested into one orb. That's basically what they made with the Black Materia. Something that could destroy the entire world. He'll be all that's left. Son of Genova will at last claim my birthright. My so, I think this is the, the question, right? Like, is Meteor still around? And I, I want to say yes. I want to say the Black Materia still is Meteor, but I think he's trying to merge all of the timelines together and then destroy that timeline with Mini uh, Meteor, right? Because then it's all of these worlds, all together, all the pain and suffering of all these worlds all tied up into one that Sephiroth can destroy and be the only thing that remains after. Absorbing all that energy is kind of what I'm thinking. Aerith says she'll stop Meteor, yet Sephiroth hasn't summoned it yet. No, no, of, of, of course not. But that's the whole reason for praying the holy in, in the first place. Um... You know, that's that's what she that's what she did. You know, it, it's it hasn't arrived yet, but it's it's a preemptive defense, right? That's that and talking to the life stream and working with the planet. Minion shall reach into infinity. It shall encompass worlds unbound by fate and histories unwritten. What do you mean? My fragmented mother. These errant worlds. All shall be one again. The reunion. All may hold forever. There's no, no such, thing. such thing as forever. Ah. But there will be. No. You're wrong. <laughs> Your day of reckoning is here. Yet, you need not be afraid. <laughs> that would mean that the Gi were there before Genova sold in, you know, but maybe. Get back here, damn it! God, this was so freaking cool, man. Like, so cool. So cool. It reminds me of Reptile from Mortal Kombat, the first movie. Remember, remember the, um... Remember, like, the thing that, like, pops out in, uh, in Mortal Kombat in the first one from, like, the grave thing? It looks just like that. It looks just like that thing from Mortal Kombat.
God, this scene was so cool. Reptile. That music, too. So good. All right, so back up here. <laughs> Still alive. No homecoming for us today. As if we were ever going to lose, we're unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable. <laughs> Moogle Knuckle. Let me through. God damn, that's brutal, man. Bebop, based on remake and rebirth so far, this, in my opinion, will ultimately be better than OG in the very end when you take all things into account. Even, you know, some things are going to be worse. I, I, there's some things that I prefer about the original still. But overall, Remake and Rebirth are better than what OG did. So if they continue the quality here from the first two, especially from Rebirth, then I think the Remake series will trump OG. Reckoning? Ooh, that's like, I like that, Taser. I like that. Not all, to be fair, not all, but 95% of minigames are optional. Like, I've been trying to think about it, like, which minigames are not optional. And I think the only ones are, like, you have to do a Mr. Dolphin. You have to do Mr. Dolphin. Um, that That's one that you have to do. I remember that. Um, you have to do the the the, the punching minigame when you first get the gold saucer. You You have to do, like, the first one, but it's easy. You have to do that one. Um, there's a few more. There's you have to do you have to do chocobo racing, right? Don't you? Once I could be wrong. Do you have to do chocobo racing? You don't have to do chocobo racing, do you? Yeah, there's only a few. I think there might be like three or four. One chocobo race. There might be like three or four. Yeah, the Rock'em Sock'em robots you have to do when you get the gold saucer. You have to do it one time. Um, but otherwise, there's none. Not too many. There's definitely not too many they have to do. Uh, most of them are enjoyable as hell. The only ones that I wasn't, like, huge into, uh, there were a couple that I wasn't, like, absolutely crazy about. Um, oh, you know another one that I, I guess I would call a minigame? Getting the chocobo on, on each area. Like, having to do, like, the hiding from the chocobo and, and you know, getting close enough to it. I guess that's a minigame. Um, so I guess I would include that one. Uh, but that was, I always, I enjoyed that each time. It was a cool puzzle. Um, but yeah, I, I liked, uh, I would say I liked at least, I, was, I would actually, I would argue I loved at least 75% of the mini games in this. You have to do everything. Kusa, that's true. That's true. You do have to do a few, a few of those in Costa del Sol. That's true. Um, you do have to do like one of the pianos too, don't you? At least one or two of the pianos, maybe. Oh my God. I, here's the funny thing. I've seen so many people say they had such a hard time with that. With the uh, chicken, oh chicken, where art thou? Like, I barely had any issue with that. I loved that side quest. I thought that side quest was so good. It was so funny and charming. And then the ending was just like the, the cherry on top. I loved, oh chicken, where art thou? But I know some people had difficulty with it. Well, with Severoth calling this our Day of Reckoning, they hinted at Rebirth's uh, title with the name of his theme in Remake, One Winged Angel Rebirth. Makes sense. He also says Reclaim in this too, though, Taser. And I think he says it a few times too. So Reclaim is a possibility. Like Reclaim our, our world. Oh yeah, Viva! I I I thought that that side quest was hilarious. I loved it. All right, so this is something I really want to pay attention to here. Is Sephiroth not able to take the black materia for himself? Does he have to be handed it? Because that's kind of the implication that I got here, is that he forces Cloud to hand it to him. Now, 
Maybe it's because he's from another timeline. Kind of in the same way that Cloud has to hand the holy materia to Aerith. And Aerith has to hand it to him to travel between dimensions. I think it might be that too, Taser. I, don't get me wrong. I do think it's a power play. It's like a domination type thing, right? I, I agree with you 100%. I think it is a domination thing. But I do wonder if it's actually a rule as well. That's kind of what I'm, I'm asking about. Do we think it might be a rule? Cryptic Curador, welcome back. It's good to have you here. And thank you so much for all the gifted subs the other night. It meant a lot. He's like, why did I come along for this? Believe that you're kidding. Calm down. We just have to return it to the altar. Yeah, I don't think Cloud's gonna allow that. All right, so hold on a sec. No, you're trying to fool me. I thought this. Uh, Aerith is smart, man. I love Aerith. That was a nice touch. This was a really well done sacrifice here. So much more emotional than it was in OG. Oh yeah, it was so much more simplistic in, in the original Bebop, yeah. So it didn't really lead to a lot of thought about it. Like I did I never really wondered that much about it because he just hands it to him in the original. But there's a lot more like there's a lot more detail here. I want to see the passing. This is, yo, he just gets crushed here. This poor cat. This poor cat. Oh no. This, this is so sad. The way the Moogle puts his hand on it. So sad. Aww. Now that's not a sight you not <sighs> Alright. Barrett, although Barrett does this a lot. Into you. He's so you impulsive, like said. think, Barrett. Think. That's mine. Fine. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna do that, just fucking, I would just fucking toss it. Although Sephiroth would go and get it, but still, you know what I mean. Like, I'm not just gonna throw it down on the ground. Alright, so he does pick it up here. Sephiroth. <laughs> this is the key. Which grants access to the true counterpart hidden between worlds. Access to the true Get counterpart back. hidden between worlds. The true counterpart. Is he talking about another black materia or is he talking about the counterpart being white materia? Because that's sort of, to me, that's like the counterpart of black materia, black and white materia counterparts. But. Get those nuts. Heather, it's good to have you here. Welcome in. Zombie cat. <laughs> the black materia. Is he using it here? What in the world? Like he's not summoning on? Meteor. It seems, right? <laughs> Could it be? Has it finally begun? <laughs> Poor Roche. Whispers? 
Sephiroth's Whispers. Whispers he's in control of. Oh my god, Caesar. Yeah, it's such a such a foolish move. Y you have to say he deserves what he got, like just for how stupid it was for him to want to beat Cloud that badly that he would let himself be experimented on by Hojo, right? I'm waiting. Okay, so Cloud walks up. He lets the black materia fall. There's all he's like, go ahead, puppy. Pick it up and give it back to me. Little bitch. Yeah, bitch, that's it. Come to daddy. That's a great question. It's a great question. Um, is it the same Sephiroth? Like, which Sephiroth is this? In, in my mind now, in my mind, there's one Sephiroth. Because it's a Sephiroth that can travel dimensions and take over whichever Sephiroth he wants to. Or, or manifest himself wherever he wants to. So, I think there's still, there still is a Sephiroth in the Northern Crater. Like, I'm, I would imagine. I still think that we're going to have that scene with Cloud and the Black Materia and, and the Sephiroth. I, I think we'll still have that. And uh, But otherwise, I think every Sephiroth we're seeing is like one Sephiroth now. When he said the counterpart between worlds, what he, they pulled from the temple isn't the Materia itself. Aerith called it a fake because it's only the key, not the real... That, Soladin, thank you. I was wondering that. I was wondering that. It, it's... Like it's not the it's not the final black materia. I don't think we know that for sure, but I agree. I do think that I thought that same thing, and I think you might be right. Like I think a lot of us were like, "Oh, Sarah, uh, Aerith is trying to to trick Cloud," but maybe she's not trying to cl uh, trick Cloud there. Maybe like she's being honest. Maybe she's actually saying like, "No, that's not the real one. That that's just that's just a key you need to get the real one." So that makes sense. That makes sense. So he's able to summon the counterpart uh, right then. So like the one that he, when he's holding his hand out there and, and, um, hold on. I would almost like to look at the old one. Hold on. Like this one here that he materializes. This one here is the real black material. And that is one that maybe... So here's the thing. Maybe he's able to hold the key, but he's not able to hold the real black materia. Cloud has to hand that to him because he never... You see it there. He never truly touches the real black materia in that moment. He lets it fall. So maybe it is a rule. Maybe it's not just a domination tactic, although it probably is as well. It's not just a power play. Maybe it also is a rule that Cloud has to hand it to him. Maybe because he's from another reality. But. Yep, sure. You look here. It, 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 he, it, he doesn't even touch it. It just falls. Boom. Just falls. It, 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 it appears in front of him and then it just falls. He never touches it. Now, does that look different than the key? Like, what the key when he's in the sky, which I assume is him unlocking, using the key to unlock the real black materia. Can we get a good shot at it? Yeah, like... It's... E, which grants access to the true counterpart hidden. E. This is the key... This is the key. Right, exactly, Bebop. I think when you think about it that way, that Cloud had to bring Holy back to his timeline, he, he had to hand it to Aerith, as we'll see in a little bit. I think 
you cannot take something from a timeline yourself. It has to be handed off. So Aerith knows that she has to give that materia to Cloud. He has to travel between back to his his timeline and hand that materia off. She cannot herself go between timelines and hand the holy materia to the Aerith that needs it, which is why Severoth is pissed off in that moment. He's actually he actually is upset, like almost like you guys cheated. Like what the hell? Like I think he says something along the lines of, um, "That's not supposed to be here," or something like that. Um, and says like he doesn't say you cheated, but it's something along those lines of like you cheated. You know what I mean? Like how like you shouldn't have done that. So it doesn't look very different. I will admit, like the key looks like Black Materia. Which access to the true counterpart hidden between. Poor those. form. That's it. Thank you, Taser. Give it back. Okay, so did it look exactly the same? Okay, let's, let's look at it here. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty much the same to me. It doesn't really look different. a little different <laughs> it, it it seems as if I have more of like a glow to it, it like it, it seems to be like almost like on fire inside the other one didn't really f seem that way okay so he goes after Aerith here I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Solodin, because that makes so much more sense now to me. Like, I kind of got, like, I was kind of, like, on board with, like, the whole idea of, like, it was just a domination tactic, but it makes so much, so much more sense this way. Like, it, 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 like, there needed to be more to it than that. Okay, so they fall. And this is where it gets interesting, right? This is where it gets interesting. Oh, that's the end of chapter 13, is it? Okay. Okay. After chasing Aerith, Cloud hands the materia to Sephiroth. In the ending of the game, Cloud pulls it out of his pocket and fuses it with his sword. When did he get that back? Yeah, I, let's 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 definitely definitely talk about that a little later on, Taser. I I agree. I I've, I've been wondering that myself. Like, when was the trade off? When was the when was the switch? Um, I wonder if we can figure it out. All right. So that is thirteen. This is an interesting scene here too. Like, why do why do we think I watched this back? What is Hojo alluding to here? Perhaps I could tell me, Professor. What? How would you explain the phenomena we witnessed at the temple? It would be premature to draw any scientific conclusions. Okay, I I had a different interpretation of that Soladin, but let's let's talk about that. The I give you my blessing. I would have to agree. Because specifically where he says I give you my blessing, I, I took had a different interpretation of it. Okay. So this is the first in my opinion, the first indication. Oh my god, Zook, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, Raiders! Welcome in, you guys. 
It's good to have you here. We're raiding over everyone saying Viper Zook. We are analyzing the ending of Rebirth, so keep that in mind, you guys. Those coming in, we are analyzing the ending of Rebirth. Please, if you need earmuffs or need to get out of here right now, I totally understand. Please. Don't spoil yourself. She likes him. Which Aerith goes into further later on about what like means. <laughs> okay. So this is really important here because I think this is like the first real indication. Boom. The prismatic light clearly represents new timeline being created, right? Split paths, prismatic light, moving forward. Let's keep an eye out for prismatic light rainbow light, all that, that is a representation of a new timeline or looking at a different timeline. I think that's like a clear indication in this final uh, act here. Hello. I know you're in there. So this date here, in my opinion... Or homeward bound, this maybe? this makes me think that 4D Aerith is OG Aerith. My dream to be precise. Or at least comes from OG Aerith. It's an it's an Aerith that went on to through the live stream have Let's play along for a bit. Okay. An all knowing power and understanding of of the universe, of the timelines, of the live stream. Um that's that's my opinion on it. Because I feel like this date doesn't really have enough meaning if not for that. Let's let you guys get this in here real quick. Level 7 Beatrix versus level 8 Titus, you guys. Get your pom-poms in. Speaking of pom-poms, if you didn't know, we are back to having uh, community goals for Marballs. Keep that in mind as well. Bebop, exactly. But each time he makes a decision, whether it's to go to Hojo, to go to Biggs, or to go back to Aerith, each of those decisions makes a timeline. As we see. We see all the different timelines. We see, we see Pug Stamp. We see Pomeranian Stamp. We see all the different timelines that he's creating by just making that one three-pronged decision. That's kind of the point of Zack in this game is to represent that. That's some Loki stuff. Exactly, Viper. Exactly. You know, let's just let this, this battle end before we keep going. And we do have an ad starting in a couple minutes, you guys. Please keep that in mind. I'll delay it five minutes. That's some Loki shit. Okay, this is going a little longer than I thought it would. Titus, you need a limit break, like, right now. Nope. <laughs> Blade, welcome in. It's over. Beatrix. We got Harry, Dan, Hugo, Kupka. Get 8,400 returned. All right. Back to it. Thing. Zach has no agency in this entire game and has been t passed around like a blunt. And he, I, I kind of like the the moment where he's like, "What the hell is going on?" And it's like, "Okay, yeah, this makes sense for Zach to say this because this guy is like being put through it right now. Like, I feel bad for this guy. He's got no control over anything. He's just being thrown around. Like, give this guy a break, Jesus." All right, so we got the rift. Rift meaning hey, that timeline about to be snipped, right? That's kind of the implication. Any timeline that has a rift in the sky is on the brink of death, end of the world, right? Can I have one? Can I, can I, can I? So, Please. in my opinion, this Aerith feels different, right? <clears throat> Which one do you want? Whichever one you pick. 
And I think that's I think it's because a lot is riding on this date for her. Like he even says it. Why are you acting so weird? This isn't you. If you ask me, I'd probably say this this date is 100% a test. That's all she's doing here. She's testing Cloud. Everything is free, but remember. Because she wants answers to something that she never got closure on when she was alive. Cloud is about to give his very first gift to Aerith. Only question is, which one will he choose? That's a I think this is OG Aerith, at least definitely not ours. I agree. I think this is OG Aerith. I 100% agree. I but that, moments. to me, means that OG Aerith went are. on to become 4D Aerith. Solo, do you agree with that? Like, that Aerith is the one that eventually went on to have om now, omniscient powers. That way. Yeah, okay. Come on. I like, I like that take myself. But I think the most important thing to me is her talking to him about the end about like or like like you know. Pretty sure I only asked to meet with Professor Hojo, not a whole platoon. All right, so this is this is the. Going to the Whatever. right road. The world's about to end anyway. Going towards Hojo. Got nothing to lose. And everything to gain. It's almost like Zack is always destined to fight a ton of soldiers. Right? Like that's just that's like his destiny. You just you have to fight a whole ton of soldiers. This is where you've been hiding. In okay, a... this is here we go. So this is where you've been hiding. In a world that has accepted its fate. He found her. Hey, what's that? She's been hiding in timelines. Let's go see. Just as you must. I feel like Zack's dying is a Destiny's Crossroads event like Aerith dying. Almost a universal certainty. Yeah, what do they call it in Loki? They call it something in Loki as well. And I'm trying to remember what they call it. There's a name for it. Like an event that always has to happen. How about you all pose? Cutest looking couple gets a Nexus phone. event. Yeah. <laughs> he better do the uh, dipping her. Really? No. You better do dipping. You better do dipping. I love it. Okay. There it is. Good. Good boy. Good boy. All right, so Pug Stamp is Big's timeline. Do, do we know what the Hojo timeline is? Did Was there anything indicating that? What gives? Reactor busted? Seems it's all out of Mako. I'm still so Is the Hojo timeline the Terrier timeline? Up is dirt. Uh, or did that bridge off of the, the ter Terrier timeline? Bomb one reactor, you thought that was still Terrier? Okay, so following down Hojo is continuing down Terrier. Going left towards Biggs creates Pug, Pug Biggs. Pomeranian is is the timeline where where uh, Cloud and and Aerith are dating. Uh, that is. Bomb barely made it through testing. Rewind when Zack is in the tunnel on his bike and there's a Zack on the tunnel pillar behind him. Here? Okay, sorry. Why Hold on. I have to survive? Rewind no when Zack is in the tunnel on his bike. Where was that? Oh my goodness. Hold on. Let's let's just in case I don't want to I don't want to spoil this for anybody. Let's uh let's back out for a second here. Let's celebrate the raid we got coming in. Wait for it. Welcome in Raiders. How are we all doing? We have an ad about to start in 40 seconds. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm so sorry. Ads are about to start. But welcome in. 
Um, we're not backing out because we're kind of just analyzing the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth right now. So if anybody doesn't want to see or hear discussion of the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I totally understand if you need to head out. But if you do stick around, I hope you enjoyed the discussion and become a part of it. My name is Drew Gold. You guys can call me Drew. Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game of all time, and now by extension, the remake and Rebirth, which I absolutely adored, and uh, and I'm having a hell of a fun time looking into what I think all this ending stuff means. Once ads are done, I got questions about Rebirth. Well, I will see you in about three minutes. <laughs> about time they finished. How dare you, Drac? How dare you? How you doing, Drac? Drac11, aka Dakak, hater of Aerith, is here. He just might be Sephiroth himself. <laughs> That's for you, Drac. That's, I just felt like I wanted to give you something. If you don't like it, just tell me, but I just wanted to give you something. Tifa <laughs> is better than Aerith. I approve this message. He might just be Sephiroth himself. Alright. Let's jump back into it. Alright, so where was the uh the part with Zach in the tunnel? Was that before this part? Where is it? It's not this far back, is it? No, it's not. Oh, maybe it is. It is. Okay. Oh, there we go. There is. It's on the It's on the back there. I didn't even realize that. Okay. So that is a difference. That is not, that's not Terrier. Right? That doesn't look like, that doesn't look like Terrier stamp to me. Border Collie? May, may, whatever it is, it's not Terrier stamp. Okay. So, so Zach heading towards Hojo even is a difference is a different uh, stance. Notice the moves like he rides at Shinra HQ is different too. Yeah. Okay. So, so it definitely is different, a different timeline than the Terrier one. Okay. That answers that. Valborn, it's good to have you here. Okay. Do next. Before that, talk to me. I'm gonna call that Jack Russell. Okay, Jack Russell uh, stamp. What's going on with this place? With you? And please don't play dumb. She knows she doesn't All have right. a lot of time. I'll tell you when we get to our spot. She's okay? got to hand him the the holy materia. Where's that? You really have to ask. It's one of my most favorite places. Can I make it any more obvious? <laughs> I love that this version of uh, No Promise or Promises to Keep. Hold on. So I think I missed her talking about the like like and all that. Did I? More like. Well, maybe it's later. Okay. Welcome back from the from the commercial break, you guys. That's in the church. Okay. Okay, so what is that? What is that? Uh, stamp. So this is not this is not Terrier. This is not Jack Russell. This is not Pug, right? That's another stamp. So Zach waiting outside the church. Do you guys think? Do you guys think this is the Zach that was knocking on the door at the end of intermission? Yeah, th th that's that's what I'm thinking too. So this so so this is completely different. Then this is this is outside of all of the other stuff. This is if if Zach didn't find Aerith in the helicopter at the beginning. So this is like a very different timeline. Big. Or Aerith. <sighs> right, inside the church, but the door is closed now, so. Sephiroth! Hey! 
I know some people thought this was the Sephiroth going into the church to kill Aerith in the scene we're about to see. But it can't be, because you that's Pomeranian era. Or pa Pomeranian no, stamp. Not you. Now you can go uh, into another timeline, Zach. See ya. So Sephiroth literally has the, abil the ability to slice open timelines. And Zack travels now to another one. It was all you, wasn't it, Sephiroth? Actually, he's in between now, is what I, I would say. Zack is in between timelines. Well, it isn't over yet. Why, which is why he shows up in the white, right? He's stuck. Stuck between. Follow the yellow flowers. I don't want any more slander on the Kingdom Hearts story being convoluted. See, I, I don't think this is anywhere even close at level. Like, Kingdom Hearts is level 10. This is level 1 of convolution, in my opinion. And that's not even to say convolution is necessarily a bad thing. But this is not even close, in my opinion. That was easy. I told you it was obvious. Having the ending raise questions, as, you know, any series usually does when it comes to trilogy, is pretty par for the course. Next time? Yeah. Next time. <laughs> so let me pause for a second. The ne next time here is really important. Um, what we're being shown here doesn't hold much weight to the story. We're just being, really just being shown anything. It's possible the world split. I talked about this earlier solo. I don't know if you heard me, but this is why I actually don't really care that much for the Zack stuff in Rebirth because its purpose is sort of lost on me because by the end by like two days after remake ended i was already entirely on board on the idea of there being endless number of realities like i was in the multiverse already like i knew that was a thing i was 99.9 .9 sure of it so them spending the whole game utilizing zach as a plot device to show that there are infinite number of realities and then just close off those realities at the end kind of makes his entire purpose in rebirth pointless so I'm not like, it, it, I didn't have like a problem with it necessarily, but it was sort of pointless to me. Like, I don't, I don't need, I don't need the Zack stuff in this game. Like I personally didn't need it. Let's see. How would intermission Zack know about Biggs? That's a good question, Zarkano. That's a good question. Unless he, unless he, we, we saw, didn't see a scene, right? Like. He, we we just see him go to the church, um, but maybe maybe we didn't see everything um, between him arriving in Midgar and intermissions ending with him in the church. You know. Yeah. Next time. <sighs> At least I know now. Where you and I stand, I mean... So let me rewind a little further there. Like, that, that's just... That was the indication that she needed... Obvious. ...about that was easy. going on another date, right? I told you it was obvious. Well, you'll have to give me a harder one next time. Oh? Next time? Yeah. Next time. <laughs> I love that so much. It's like she finally got the... The answer. At least I know now. Where you and I stand, I mean. That it could have become something more. It could have, at least. Thing is, Cloud, I really like you. But then, like can mean a lot of different things, can't it? Because there's liking, and then there's liking. Seriously, what's going on? You've been weird all day. Here we go. Like, this is essential. This is so important. I know this is going to be so important in part three. Whatever happens, don't blame yourself. 
But also, don't completely block it out, Cloud. <laughs> don't do that either. No, I think I think what Zarkana was alluding to there, Solo, is on the steps there when he was sitting outside the church. Did Zach bring up Biggs? Because if so, when did that Zach even meet Biggs? Because we know where Zach met Biggs in the other timelines where he gets Aerith from the helicopter. Right, Aim. So if Zach is talking about Biggs, when did he meet Biggs in that version where he never got Aerith out of the helicopter? Thank you. Sorry. I'll be okay. Here we go. She never lost her memories. She never lost the power of holy from her materia. Here. And she can't give it to the other heir herself. It. But your mom gave that to you. This isn't about me, though. It's about saving the world. And you. New timeline. So thank you, Cloud, for everything. What is this? Aerith gives it to herself, but she has to use Cloud as an intermediary. She has to. It's the rules, I think. She can't give it to herself in another timeline. That's against the rules. She found a loophole, and that's what Sephiroth didn't expect. Oh, that's cool, Solo. You'll have to point that out to me. I like that. I love that. All right, let's listen here. This is this is it. Finally, the explanation that timelines are real. When the boundaries of fate are breached, new worlds are born. Which is what we did in Remake. Boundaries of fate are breached. We destroyed fate in Remake. The planet encompasses a multitude of worlds. Ever unfolding. So, real quick, to, uh, to Valborn and to everybody. Do... That Sephiroth was there to kill Aerith. He found her, right? As he said at the beginning of the date, found you. This is where you've been hiding. In a world that's on the brink of destruction, right? He found her. Um, he's coming to kill her. Is he just trying to kill that specific Aerith because that specific Aerith is 4D Aerith? Or is he going around every single timeline gradually murdering every Aerith? Like, what do we think? <laughs> think about it. Some quickly perish while others endure. Yet even the most resilient worlds are doomed to fade. Nevertheless, their loss is not to be mourned. For it is not death, but a homecoming that awaits them. In the planet's embrace, all life is as one. All born are bound to her. No matter the timeline. Should this world be unmade, so too shall her children. He'd tell you that he only cares about the planet. The OG timeline is fate, Cryptic Curador. The OG timeline is fate. Sephiroth loses in that timeline. Genova loses in that timeline, right? So Sephiroth's only, only way out is to manipulate our party into destroying fate for him. So how does he do that? 
he has to try and and merge he has to infiltrate the timeline and try to mess up moments no worries taser get some rest please he's got to he's got to mess up moments in the timeline that are going to make branches off he's ultimately unsuccessful at the beginning because the whispers which are soldiers of fate keep course correcting right they keep making sure that it follows the og timeline as much as possible little things you know squeak through like wedge surviving and and things like that but they keep trying to course correct to ultimately keep the major nexus moments happening right but what happens at the end we literally play into his hand by Eret's instructions Eret says it has to be done we we play into his hand and we destroy fate for him an arbiter of fate that's literally encaging sephiroth inside of him we destroy that unleashing sephiroth who now has control of the whispers and is unlocked from fate that is the moment that fate allows or i should say the destruction of fate allows for multiple timelines so th there you go i guess that's my explanation is there a mod on or uh can, i can dm you the image of the two stamps through uh do you want to get on the discord solo i don't know if you're on my discord you can certainly dm me there if you would like um let me put that in chat for you how did he know he would lose because he does lose in the og timeline he loses he is defeated by cloud multiple times He's defeated by Cloud in OG7. He's defeated by Cloud in Advent Children. He he always is defeated by Cloud. He never wins in the original timeline. So he had to cheat, basically. He knew it was his destiny to lose. So how do you how do you win then? You remove destiny from the equation. He'd do everything in his power to protect and preserve it. But this isn't the way it's supposed to be. He hasn't lo lost yet, Cryptic Curadora. As Aerith says at the very end, Cloud asks, like, why is he smiling? And Aerith says, because he knows it's not over Listen yet. To the planet, Cloud. He's not done. To her ecstatic cries. Because the Sephiroth that we see here is a Sephiroth that is not from the present or the past. It is a Sephiroth that is a part of the life stream from the future, able to travel timelines. That's my theory, at least. I think there's very much a reason that the Sephiroth we keep seeing in this has one black wing. The black wing was never introduced in, in uh, Final Fantasy VII OG. He never had a black wing. That wasn't a thing. When did when did Sephiroth have a black wing for the first time? Advent Children. So, I think that's the indication. Although I guess you could say Kingdom Hearts as well, but um, you you get what I'm saying. He, uh, I think he has it in Kingdom Kingdom Hearts as well. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts is technically technically it, but I don't think we're going to include Kingdom Hearts in this, right? I pl pl please, let's please not put Kingdom Hearts in the canon, please. I I do not I don't even want to I don't want to go down that road. God's sakes, please. Let's keep this the Final Fantasy 7 compilation. What's the first time we see the Black Wing in the compilation? It's it's Advent Children. <laughs> Valborn, please. I don't even want to think about it. Sure. Screaming! It's screaming! Oh, Cloud. I thought you might finally understand. Cloud, lend me your strength. Also, Kai, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. Destiny. Zuba Chan, you as well. Together. Welcome in, you guys. Seven seconds till the end. Alright, what do we think seven seconds till the end, Perhaps, end means? Now that we're past rebirth, do with it. what does seven seconds till the end mean? Let go of the past, Cloud. For the future is bright. We are to bear witness to the reunion of worlds. Reunion. Still no idea. You guys don't even want to guess, huh? Alright, here we go. He just explains timelines. He explains all this, right? Leave me out of it. 
Leave me out of it. How very stubborn of you. He doesn't want anything to do with the timelines, right? A little push. You need a little push. Here we go. <laughs> I give you my blessing. I give you my blessing. Okay. I think blessing is the the ability to be between timelines. That's my guess. I think Sephiroth has the ability to travel between timelines, right? What if he what if he gave a part of that to Cloud here? He could just be giving them the Black Materia. Maybe that's the moment to give them the Black Materia. That's definitely a possibility. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's both. But um, I think if you really want to fuck with Cloud, giving him that to break his mind makes sense to me. And it explains a lot of this ending with Aerith as well. Exactly, Shadow Lancer, exactly. We'll talk about that later. But I, 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 that's part of why I think so, yeah. Where am I? Hmm. Here we go. Doesn't belong here. That doesn't belong here. He brought the white materia. Very very poor form. Aerith found a loophole. You underestimated her, Sephiroth. Okay, interesting Zupa Chan, very interesting. So, you were thinking Black Materia then? Alright, let's fast forward a little bit. We meet again. You're okay. Sephiroth's here. I can feel it, watching us. Yeah. But forget about him for now. Okay, so not too far off what I'm saying then, Zupachan. Okay. But I'm I agree, Soladin, there is. It but this is a different Aerith than the Aerith we're seeing at the end, in my the opinion. The one I've been trying to find. The real you. So the contradiction makes sense to me. Leave Sephiroth to me. Leave Sephiroth to me. Him. I can handle him. He's planning to use the Black Materia, but I won't let that happen. He has to be stopped by a Cetra. And I'm the last. Right, Shadow Lancer could have been both, right. Alright, so I don't think she's switching the materia here, because I, I think if she did, she would switch hands. I think she's just absorbing the memories into the materia she has and giving him back the hollow materia. I call it hollow. Because it, it there's the song Hollow, so I feel like it makes sense. I appreciate so now hollow materia goes back to Cloud, but there's got to be a reason she's giving it, it to him. With you. It's gonna come into play in the next part. It has to. What does Cloud fill it with? It looks empty. So now she's able to, to pray to Holy again. This is how she tricked, tricked Sephiroth. This is how Sephiroth underestimated. This is my opinion on how Sephiroth underestimated Aerith, as he says at the end. Because Aerith 40 chest him. She, she utilized a loophole to give the holy materia back to herself by utilizing cloud as an intermediary between timelines. Aerith? When he's rebuilt, Aerith. right, Valborn? Right? When cloud is rebuilt in part three. I agree. We're going to talk about that. But I think that's when it fills, is when he's rebuilt. Come back.
I'll, ju I'll just say right now, I don't think the Aerith at the end is Genova, but we'll talk about that later. I don't agree with that theory. There is definitely some weird stuff going on, and I'll talk about the weird stuff, but there's too much that doesn't work with that theory, in my opinion. He's going to fill it all right. Uh, but yes, definitely keep that in mind. This Aerith, who is the Aerith going to pray in the altar, this Aerith is saying, this Aerith is saying, don't, don't go after Sephiroth. Let me handle him. You take care of yourself. All right, so this, I think we can fast forward. He, he talks with all the party members as they head towards the City of the Ancients. I don't think there's anything too important here that I think we need to really focus on. If you start feeling Okay. I love that version of Who Am I, by the way. Also, let me just say, slight disappointment that we didn't get to really look throughout the City of the Ancients, but in retrospect, thinking about it, they made the right decision here. Looking throughout the City of the Ancients in like a big way would have completely destroyed the pacing. And we come back to the City of the Ancients. We come back to it. So they made the right call. They definitely made the right call, in my opinion. They should not have let us explore the City of the Ancients here. The Grand Metropolis, where the Ancients once gathered to pray, thought lost to time. All right, so hold on a sec. Okay, so the next part is the part of the reason I think Cloud has been given the Black Materia at this point. Like, he already has it, Solodan, in your opinion. The White Whispers fight him, which have been protecting him until now. Hmm, that's an interesting point. It is very interesting that it, it almost seems like the White Whispers, and both the White and the Black Whispers, are trying to stop Cloud from saving Aerith here. Does it almost feel that way? Or is it just that they're trying to stop him because he has the Black Materia? I don't know. Until today. The Promised Land. This is it, right? You know, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, the White Whispers, in my opinion, are Aerith's cryptic, the yes. The Capital said it was the heart of Cetran civilization, but I never thought I'd see it. And this place screams Sephi wants Aerith to pray. He definitely says that. He says, go ahead, Aerith, pray. Kyan, okay. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say those assholes are fixing to get in our way again. Look at them go. Yeah. Do you have any feelings that the Whispers are the souls of the Cetra? Both the Black and the White Zarkano? Just that the Black were taken over? It, that's a, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're like, frankly told them in part one that they are the Arbiters of Fate. Like, they are soldiers of fate. Can the Cetra become soldiers of fate? I don't know. I don't think so. But... Maybe, maybe Eretz whispers are Cetra? It is interesting that they're wearing the cloaks and the hoods like the Cetra did. That's interesting. Um, there's obviously a correlation there, but... Yeah, so this is identical pretty much to the remake cutscene. Yeah, it really is. Which is symbolic of something, maybe? Of course I did, Viva. Good, Aaron. Pray. It's upon us. Merge. When spite and sorrow are harvested, 
to feed the planet. The merging of worlds when spite and sorrow. So again, it's almost like he's trying to take all of the pain and sadness and suffering from all the timelines and ball it up into one, right? Is that what we're thinking? I think Aerith less controls the whispers as much as influences them. Their assessment feels like they're still the same as before in a way. The white also comes out of the weapons. Yeah, that's the first time you see them. The first time you see them is in the live stream with, with Tifa. So where's the timeline where Sephiroth never realized he's Jenova's offspring and stayed a good guy? Do you, do you, what do you guys think the Sephiroth at the end of Remake is? Do we think that's the same Sephiroth we're seeing now? The one that says seven seconds till the end? The one that offers his hand the cloud and says, join me? Let us defy destiny together. Do we think that's the same Sephiroth we're dealing with here? Because it feels, I, I will say, he, he felt different to me back then. You don't think there's any reason to think otherwise? I know there are some people that think that's like a Sephiroth that knows that Genova screws him over. And wants to take out Genova and, and, and win it all. Okay. Why are they white? <laughs> Red, you can't just ask why people are white. Expressway. Just like we're on back when there's expressway, yep. It's like we're back on the expressway. So here's a question, though. Going with the idea that Aerith does not want to be saved, that she's accepted her fate, knows that it's important for her to become a woman to life stream, is it not Aerith here, then, that allows Cloud to get through? Like, what... Like, this is opened up in the same way Aerith opened up things in Remake in Part 1. So if she doesn't want to be saved, then don't let them through. Shouldn't be too hard. Just gotta say the magic words. Daddy's coming home real soon, honey. Uh, no thanks. I'm good. Can I keep you? Hey, King Arden, how you doing? Welcome in. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I think these are keeping the party out, but we're always going to let Cloud in. It's, it's like Cloud has to be there. Like there's an importance to Cloud being there. You don't think it was Aerith? They, they sh all shout as if Aerith is the one that's allowing him to come through. And it does look a lot like what Aerith did in part one. Like Aerith holds out her hand and the, the white lights with like all the fogginess starts up. So it looks a lot like what Aerith did in part one. Which to be fair is why I have always questioned why an all-knowing Sephiroth would kill her. But now we can assume he had a plan to separate her from the holy material using the whispers to drain her memories, which is why he calls out the poor form uh, messing up his plan by bringing Holy from another world. Right, so is did is that the moment where his, his entire plan really was thwart, uh, thwarted, Soludin? Because that's what it feels like, right? Like, he, he lost in that moment when Aerith figured out a way to get Holy back to Aerith. So now he's like, okay, I guess I gotta kill her? <laughs> he's fuming there, I imagine. <laughs> That's it's it's kind of hilarious to think about actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's almost like might as well kill her, right? Kind of. <laughs> Which cloud is sent from 40 air to the sleeping forest with whole materia? Our, our cloud. This cloud right here. Killing her brings despair, so her death always plays into his pain. Yeah. And he feeds off of that. It very much feeds off of that. But didn't that Cloud wake up in a different timeline? Yes. So, Cloud wakes up in the timeline. When he falls from the Temple of the Ancients, Cloud wakes up in the timeline with Aerith and goes on a date. And then Aerith, in that timeline, gives Cloud the Holy Materia, pushes him back into his timeline with the Holy Materia so he can give it to his Aerith. You all are on level 9 out of 10 at this discussion. I'm on level 1 out of 100. I think there's only one Cloud. I agree. There's only one Cloud uh, that we really need to worry about. I didn't realize our Cloud is the same Cloud that woke up. Yes. In my opinion, it is. I think I think we're looking at one cloud. Notice the uniform is different from the Zach timeline. He took over the unconscious cloud that Zach had sitting there in a wheelchair. I don't think he was technically physically there. His spirit was brought right. It's sort of like how Marlene's consciousness transferred to Marlene in that timeline. Drock. What are you doing? Photo sensitivity warning, you all. We just got hit with a 7777 Final Fantasy 7 Rave Tippy, courtesy of Duroc. Let's go! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The 7777 Rave Tippy. We just got 40 minutes of extension with that. 40 minutes extension. 40 minutes of extension. More time to discuss this. I wasn't even my final form of dance yet. I had like 60 more dances. <laughs> Let's go. Let's also spin that goal wheel. Yeah, dimensions, timelines, sim. Ooh, it's close. One, one in the same kind of. Thank you, Valborn. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much, Durak. Thank you so much. That's huge. Seventy-seven, seventy-seven. You guys, I love it. More time to discuss and play Rebirth tonight. We need it. We need it. We haven't even gotten to playing the game yet. We're just talking. Ah, uh, Duroc wants that good start to the season. The cock strikes again, getting all those nuts. It's a lot of nuts Duroc just got for the start of this season. I know that I, I still need to send out my gift cards, by the way. I keep forgetting to do it. Duroc, Dan, Rose, I know I got to send you guys gift cards. I will. Duroc is a legend. Mixy Mac, get those nuts. Fill that sack. Um, Where did we leave off? Sorry, we were talking about... About, oh, sorry. Um, yes. So I, is that what we think? I, I, I kind of was of the same mind that it was the two, the two um, comatose, Aerith and Cloud. Like Aerith wakes up first and then Cloud wakes up as well in that timeline. Um, and it's the one where they, where Zach left, he, he had just went and they woke up. Are we in agreement on that? That's the same timeline where Zach left 
to either go to Hojo or to Biggs. It was 40 Aerith bringing Cloud Soul with her to take over those bodies. Yes, agreed, Kyan. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, 40 Aerith is capable of traveling wherever the hell she wants. She has that ability. So she went, occupied the comatose Aerith, woke up Cloud within that within that body as well, so they could have their final date. Okay, we're in agreement. We are in agreement. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. I, I, you know, just just seeing if we're all on the same page here. This will all make sense in the end, you guys, I promise. It'll all make sense in the end. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna watch this again, you guys. We're gonna feel it again. This music, holy shit, man. Also, by the way, I didn't even listen to Eric's theme at the end of the credits. That shit might be the best version of Eric's theme I've ever heard. Like that, oh my god, is amazing. I cried listening to it today. Beautiful version of Eric's theme. Yeah, we're calling it 4D Aerith, <laughs> Rose. <laughs> She's playing 4D chess and she has ac ac uh, she has access to uh, dimensional travel. Yes, at the very end, Cryptic. I'll, I'll play it when we're all done. It's so good. A little bit, Cryptic, yes, a little bit. I skimmed it yesterday, Bebop, yeah. I agree with a lot of what he said, but there's a lot I don't agree with, too. God, this scene... This no by Cody Christian here. So good. Timeline created. Hold on. Back up. Back up. All right. So we, we mentioned this earlier to keep an eye out for every time you see the prism effect. You see the rainbow glow. Notice how the moment Cloud regains control of the sword there, you see that prismatic effect happen. He just created a new timeline by doing that. Timeline. I'm, okay, so this is what I'm not sure of. Did his sword get her no matter what here? That's like my big question right now. So look at the glow, right? Look at the glow around everything. So this is the version. This this If the glow is here in my mind, that means it's the one where he was holding Sephiroth back, right? And in that version, the sword lands almost vertically down, right? Look at it. It's like very close to vertical. Glow is still here, mostly vertical. Can't see any blood on it. Glow disappears. Sword is now much more angled. Glow disappeared. Sword is more angled now. It's not 
vertically down. Blood on the sword when he pulls it out. So the blood was in the ground. The sword was enough in the ground that you couldn't see the blood. Right? Yeah, so Zubachan, what we're talking about, though, is in the one where he throws Sephiroth away, did the sword still get into her, partially? The sword is, like, seven feet long, right? So he's holding him back, but did the sword still hit her? Because it seems like it doesn't matter. It, when it as we're about to see here, when it flashes between the two of them, it doesn't matter. One has blood, one doesn't. He's seeing both timelines. Cloud is caught in between. Did you swing with the QTE or did you let the timer run out? Are you talking about like mashing the buttons? I mashed them. I tried to lower the sword, if that's what you're asking. So the glow is here, right? So this implies it's a version where he threw Sephiroth away, right? Sephiroth's on the other side. This implies it's a version where he threw him away. <laughs> now it's merging. We got OG timeline where he's saying the words he said in the original. My eyes are burning. My my fingers are trembling. My mouth is dry. Whatever I can't remember exactly what he says, but the part where he's saying all these things and then Sephiroth laughs at him, right? And, and he says, are you trying to tell me you have feelings? And he's like, of course I do. Don't wait. There he is. He's mouthing the words. No, he's going back and forth. Is it is it denial? Is it delusion? Or is is it just that he's stuck between timelines? Or is it both? Is the fact that Sephiroth allowed him to be between timelines, is that just breaking him even further? He's trying he's trying to almost like force him to realize what's happened here. He's throwing the blood in his face. Cloud, it's okay. Yeah, but here's the thing, Bebop. Nobody else is seeing that except Cloud. Right? And Tifa. Tifa to a certain extent here. But afterwards, it doesn't matter. Like, nobody, nobody's seeing what Cloud sees after this, this moment. So look at, Air, uh, Tifa is seeing this right now, in my opinion. This is Tifa looking at them, and she's seeing, she's seeing both. Right? That's what it seems like. And so it begins. A confluence of worlds and emotions. <laughs> Kayan, no. Soludin, yes. <laughs> it seems like Tifa's seeing it to me, but why would Tifa see it? Transforming them into rage, sadness, hatred. <laughs> possibly. No, yes, possibly. All right, so let's go back there. That's actually very important. Everything he's saying here is what implies that what is the fuel of Sephiroth, right? The fuel of Sephiroth is pain, suffering, hatred, anger, despair. Shall I give you despair? It's, it's all, it all comes around. It's all full circle. Despair. That's, 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 he gets off to all this. Right? And this is what Aerith might have been alluding to at the Temple of the Ancients. Don't 
play into his hand. He wants to put us in the worst possible mindset we've ever been in. He wants to put us in to a state of pain and suffering, but we have to be in a state of love and forgiveness in order to defeat him. That's the only way to defeat Sephiroth is to not give him that power. Never have I felt them so keen. He's so happy right now. He feels it. That's a good that's a good theory, Care Bear. Maybe it's because she was in the live stream. I like that idea. However, uh, uh, Kyan, yeah, we'll talk about that in a moment. I actually want to talk about that after Shut the battle. Because I think that really demonstrates it more than ever after, after the battle. All, you're just a puppet. The transition here into the music, you guys, kills me destroys me. This version. Oh my god. It's so good. I could barely keep my eyes open. Like, I was so distraught. What a mess, man. I was. But anyway. Alright. So Cloud, or sorry, Zack, in the live stream, stuck between timelines. Follow the yellow flowers. Interesting. Is it Aerith bringing Zack to Cloud? How about that? I sure as hell hope so, Soladin. Please. Yeah. Riss, yeah. This was fan service out the ass right here. <laughs> Severoth wants Cloud to rage, but he didn't well, because Aerith calmed him down and let him see that she's alive. Hence, all the party had limit breaks. So, so I actually completely disagree with that, Valborn. Busy. Aerith had no part in that. That's entirely Cloud's mind breaking. Aerith is dead. I'm 100% of the opinion Aerith is dead. Aerith is dead, dead, dead. Fully dead. She's alive no more than she was alive in the original. In the original, she's a part of the life stream. Now she's out there in, like, the, the ether. She's dead. They did not change it. She's dead. Sephiroth. Cool scene. I also love that uh, Zach talks to Sephiroth here like it's five years ago. I think Aerith is, I think Aerith is dead. Yeah, Valborn, I do. Yeah. I do. I think she still has the ability to influence things as a part of the live stream, but that's no different than than OG. Like I, I think a lot of people are like, she's alive, she's alive, she she's alive in this way. It's like, well, yeah, she was alive in the original too, if you want to go that way with it. She talks, she literally talks to Cloud in Advent Children. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she's alive. If you if you want to go with the idea that nobody ever dies if they're like a part of the plan and part of the life stream and all that. But anyway, Zach talks to Sephiroth like it was five years ago. Like, how dare you betray a soldier? And Sephiroth's just like, yo, dude, I'm way past that at this point. Like, what the fuck are you even talking about, Zach? Like I'm trying I'm trying to merge a million timelines into one, trying to summon a meteor to destroy them all and absorb all the sadness and and, and pain of the entire universe. Like And Zach's like, how dare you how dare you betray soldier? 
I did, Solodin, yeah. I didn't get to do it, though. I got to do the synergy ability. Easily. Alright, anyway. So two do they part. Alright, so it's like, you guys had enough time together. Enough of this. Separated. Gotta keep them separated. Cloud, save her! Yeah, right, Kyan? Yeah. It's like he's proud of him in that moment. Like, look at you! Look how far you've come. Proud of you. Proud of you, boy. Anyway, I think we can kind of skip through this and get to Aerith showing up, right? Dance, asshole. Oh, right. They, they're, I forgot about this. Holy shit. There's so many uh, phases to this battle. Gotcha. Zack and Cloud working together again. All right, here we go. Here we go. One last, one last, uh, hurrah here from Aerith. This is my favorite moment. Aerith is the hero here. This is all Aerith. She is so much more powerful than Cloud in this, in this fight. Aerith, he's talking to Aerith. Oh, of course it does. Of course it does, Solo, yeah. She's powerful. She's very powerful. It makes sense. It's 4D Aerith. 4D Aerith. Let's go. I love that, man. I love, I love the illusion there, or the... Uh, you know, the reference to having children with the the sword. Oh, so good. It's so good. Not only that, also in the in the wing as well, Super Chan. Okay. And this is what I'm talking about, like, he wasn't defeated. He's just, he's just done with them for now. He knows now is not the time. You're not going to have Aerith with you next time. Why is he laughing? Because he knows this isn't over. I mean, regular Aerith is, is, uh, on the ground right now. <laughs> He, I think he knows, like, now's not the time. But this is, this is the farewell, in my opinion, to Aerith entirely. This is her saying goodbye. Here. Very reminiscent of Advent Children. Ready? Everybody's waiting. She goes back to the live stream. That's supposed to be farewell right there. If Cloud wasn't insane, that's farewell right there. But Cloud is broken, and this scene shows it better than any other coming up. Cloud believes Aerith is still alive. In my opinion, yes. He is completely broken, and this scene shows it. Cloud is completely... He's mo more broken than he's ever been in the entire compilation here, in my opinion, Mixed Matt. Look at this. Everybody is broken in, in, the, in the morning here. Not in their mental state. They are broken. They, Aerith is dead. 
they are all mourning over their body. What happens here when Cloud wa walks up? Watch. Everybody else is gone. H2O. Everybody else is gone. It's just Cloud and Aerith and his hero fantasy. His delusion. The prism is there, exactly. He's not crying. He's not even worried. And what does he say? Aerith. Wake up. Like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Wake up. And of course she does. This is no different than Cloud refusing to believe that Zack died. And now this is the most haunting scene in the entire game. He just laid her to rest. They didn't allow us to see it because that breaks the illusion for us as well. But the burial just happened. He just laid her to rest. Everybody has been sitting around the water for who knows how long. They're all mourning. They're unable to move on. Even Barrett's broken. Lips quivering, covering his eyes because he's crying. Tifa might be more broken than anybody, emotionally. But look at Cloud here. Nothing. Eyes wide. No tears. No furrowed brow or anything. Can't stay here forever. We'd best get moving. And now watch Tifa's reaction here when Cloud speaks. Yep. Sounds good. She gasps at him. He's just like, yep, sounds good. No big deal. His mind's trying to tell him the truth. No, I refuse. And when he refuses, what does he see? An Aerith shrouded in darkness. And listen to Aerith's theme here. I'll see you off. Look at Cloud and Aerith here. They're looking at each other. Everybody else in mourning, just Cloud and Aerith looking at each other, nobody else. This is especially haunting here because Tifa picks up on it. Watch this. Tifa's not ready Tifa. to move on. Just like when the plate was collapsing. She's the last one, right? Cloud just like, come on, let's go. Watch her face here. Look at Cloud. He glances. He glances in the direction of where Aerith is and he smiles. He's smiling at Aerith right now. Tifa saw it. He's looking at Aerith. That's not there. And Tifa saw it. Look at her face here. She's probably scared. Not just she's not just losing Cloud. She's scared of Cloud. Probably right now. And she should be. I have to admit. This scene, I feel like we can skip because we talked about it earlier. Rufus was manipulated by by Genova, by Sephiroth, by extension, um, into starting a war to put the world in not. in pain and suffering. Anyway, a war-torn world is better for Sephiroth. It's more, more energy for him to feed off of. Hmm. 
It's a good reveal, Zarkano. It is, yeah. It's a cool twist. What's going on with the weapons here? They seem... They seem distraught. It seems like they're they're ready to, like, like to re report back to the big weapons. Like, yo, yo, you guys need to wake the fuck up. You guys need to wake up. Shit's going down. Shit just got real. Now, where is Zack? He died in all these timelines, but he woke up in one as well. And the timeline he wakes up in, the flowers are blooming. It's not Terrier Stamp. It's probably not a timeline that has a, a rift in the sky. Is it our prime timeline? Is it the one that Cloud and Party is in? Has it merged him in with us? You just think it's a safe timeline, so it would end. Do you think it's our timeline, or do you think it's just a safe timeline? You think it's Pug Stamp? Okay. Of course, they don't show us a stamp here. Because that would be too much. But who's to say they can't unite again? <gasps> Riss, that's a possibility. I personally wouldn't like that. I want it to still be Tifa, but we'll see. Pug stamp timeline, the live stream dry is dried out, yeah. There wouldn't be flowers blooming in the Pug Stamp one. <laughs> I'm still expecting the big weapons. Oh, 100% is Arcano, 100%. So this is, again, further indication that the Hollow Materia is going to have some importance. They are 100% building towards that. And I will reiterate it's got to be when clouds piece back together and retains his true memories and that that material is going to fill when he does but it's let me pause for a second but here's what i love because I, I i'm so sure they're going to do this and it makes me so much happier with how this ended because my immediate thought when this ended is they ripped air its burial away from us they didn't give us closure but now I, I retroactively looking at it and it's like of course they didn't give us closure because cloud, cloud doesn't have closure clouds in denial and they have to put us in that state as well. But when are we going to see Eret's burial? It's going to be in the same moment where Cloud has to understand everything else as well. When Cloud has to accept the truth that he is not who he thinks he is, that the people he loved died, including Aerith, and that he was not able to save her, that he, his hero fantasy is a lie. All that is going to come together in that moment where Cloud is pieced back together. And we will see the full burial in that moment. And it will be devastating in all the right ways. Of course, nobody's acknowledging Aerith so, here. What Aerith actually do anyway? It, that, we're going to talk about that because some people think Aerith is Genova, and that's one of the reasons I don't think so, Kyan. So let's talk about that in a moment. Well, Nobody else is acknowledging Aerith here. No. She doesn't even react to the to the uh, you know backfire there. And with that, we are cleared for takeoff. <sighs> Finally. Yuffie's still crying. Just further, you know, solidifying that Aerith died. It's not fair. This is the saddest, though. Aer Tifa is so messed up. This was her best friend. She touches red. Aerith? In my opinion, the two can be happening at the same time. Like, I think... What the hell? Let's pause for a second, because this is important. But um, I think that Aerith's spirit could be there, and Air and Red 13 could be feeling her. And at the same time, there is an Aerith that the Cloud is seeing. 
that is not the real Aerith and is not acting the way Aerith would act and is not telling him what Aerith would tell him because Aerith told him, don't go after Sephiroth. Take care of yourself. But Cloud can't do that right now because if he takes care of himself, he has to admit that he did not save Aerith. It means he has to accept that he failed. He can't take care of himself. His mind's not letting him take care of himself. So what will he do instead? He's going to continue his hero fantasy. He's going to continue going after Sephiroth, even though Aerith just told him a chapter ago, don't do this. Take care of yourself. Don't go after Sephiroth. I'll take care of Sephiroth. And worst of all, he still has the Black Materia influencing him. The reunion. Yeah, one sec. He's hiding it. It's almost like the One Ring from Lord of the Rings. You have to promise not to look up. A hundred percent it's like the ring because the ring literally in Lord of the Rings was a metaphor for the atom bomb. Like that's what it was. Like that's like a known thing. It was a metaphor for the atom bomb. And that's exactly what the black materia is. It is a world destroying materia. It is the atom bomb. He sees the rift. Don't look up. Well, the rift indicates now I've got a look. dimension that's on the brink of destruction, but nobody else Fine, sees it. But don't let it get to you. Don't let what get to me. The it's cloud is real. Just in illusion. some way stuck. Or able to see let's go get multiple timelines at the same time. He's hiding up north. North. Trust me. Maybe yeah. that's the blessing that Sephiroth gave the soldier's him. intuition. But it's also oh, what's yeah? what's hurting him right now and maybe that was Sephiroth's right. intent to mess with Cloud's mind by not letting him know what's real he wants him to be confused he wants him to be unsure of everything alright fine we trust you just remember I think Cloud's moveset right at the beginning of part 3 is going to be very different because of the Black Materia and that's a load you'd best be ready to carry Barrett is reluctantly trusting Cloud here, and this line don't I don't think about me. I can handle it. I don't think Barrett likes that line at all. He looks at Tifa as well, like, what is going on with him? Tifa doesn't have a single word spoken after Aerith dies. Not a single word. Take care. You gonna be okay getting back? Of course, nobody else gets to see Cloud talking to Aerith here. He might not even uh, be talking out loud. Said I wasn't. <laughs> so this is what's interesting. That is an allusion to something that happened between Aerith and Cloud in Part One, when he brings her to the playground and he asks her if she's gonna be okay going back alone. So. Again, is this in Cloud's head and he's using his memories with Aerith to create this Aerith? Or if you want to go with the idea that it's Genova, is Genova able to read his memories and manifest an Aerith that is utilizing those in order to trick him? I don't think this is Genova. We'll talk about that in a moment. Don't worry. It's like a second home. I guess. But what if, what if something happens? Then I'll send up smoke. Thanks. I'll keep an eye out. Some people think it's because this Aerith tells him to go after Sephiroth. Because I'll Genova wants him to go after Sephiroth. Into my prayers. I'll stop the meteor. And I'll leave the rest to you. Good luck. Aerith. I will stop Sephiroth. Trust me. You promise? So that's what a lot of people are like really hung up on is that. 
But again, Cloud's in denial right now. He's not taking care of himself. He's not taking care of himself. And Aerith that is speaking to Cloud right now, in his head, would be feeding into his hero fantasy. So it makes sense that an Aerith in his head would tell him to go after Sephiroth and not take care of himself. Because taking care of himself means admitting he didn't save Aerith. But here's the one thing that does, that I will agree is weird. The one thing I will agree is weird is a filmmaking tactic that is very tropey and common. A filmmaking talk that right there. She He stops her. She's about to walk away, right? Eric, and this is so traditional. I will stop Sephiroth. You can't see her face. Trust me. She stops in her tracks. If you could see her face right now, it would be like, gotcha, bitch. Like, right? Like, that's such a tactic in filmmaking. Walking away, can't see me. He says the thing, smile. I got him. Turn around. But they can't give us that, right? They can't show us that or it's too obvious. So what do we see? We see her, see her slowly stop. But if we could see her face right now, maybe she's smirking. Like, I got it. You can't see me. <laughs> right? You promise? Promise. Here's why I really don't think it is, though. Because it ruins this moment. And I don't think they would do this. This is him saying goodbye to her. This is her saying goodbye to him, saying goodbye to all of them. We have promises to keep playing. If this was the moment people are trying to set it up to be with it being Genova, you would have eerie music to close it off. You wouldn't have promises to keep. You wouldn't have a beautiful shot of Aerith saying goodbye. I don't take it as ominous, I take it as sad. It's her saying goodbye, and us saying goodbye to her. Um, the whole wind affecting thing, I, I don't know that that means as much as people are playing it off to mean. Um... Like, their clothing doesn't really affect, get really affected by it very much either, does it? Gets Barrett's a little bit? And with that, we are clear. Did Sid's jacket move at all? Well. Hard to tell. Little bit. His, his scarf is waving. Like, I, I don't know. Like, so what, what would, would that mean, though? It would mean that the one that's, that's uh, over by, the one that's over by um, Red 13 and Tifa is like a spirit that they can sense. But the one that Cloud has in his head is like, he's, his mind is manifesting her, at, like, realistically. I guess, Maybe. That is also not a natural phenomenon, whereas wind is a natural phenomenon. And the other members have some other hang-up. There could be something to it, but... So if she's a part of the live stream, natural phenomenon could be still showing on her. It's either that or she's not there at all, and it's just in Cloud's head. But since it's in Cloud's head, it's going to... She's going to react to the environment realistically because his mind is going to manifest it that way. Um, I think that's my big question is, like, is she there at all truly in cl it, it, for Cloud? Like, the Cloud that the, the Aerith that Cloud is talking to, is that Aerith there at all? Or is that purely in Cloud's head? I agree that the Aerith by Red 13 and Tifa, that Aerith is there in spiritual form. That is the Aerith in the live stream that that Red 13 can sense. 100%. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily need to be the same Aerith that Cloud is talking to, Kyan, is what I'm saying. Like, they can, there can be an Aerith that is there spiritually. Um, 
because the, the Aerith, as we see, is like teleporting around. Like it doesn't have to be the same Aerith necessarily. Um, the one that Cloud is talking to could be purely one that's in his head. That's the other possibility as well, Mixy Matt, is that he's seeing an Aerith that survived because he's seen between timelines. Like there's, there's like, I think there's like three different ways it could go. Right, exactly, Bachan. Those are the three. Another world, he's coping, or it's Genova. I agree. Those are the three. Those are the three possibilities in my head. I guess the fourth would be she's just a part of the live stream. But why would she be visible to him and nobody else? Because he is connected to the live stream, because he has Genova cells, because Sephiroth gave him the blessing. Uh Right, I agree with you there, Kyan. I don't think it's mutually exclusive. I think it can be both. I agree. They, they, they set up a really great question here at the end of it that I think a lot of people didn't think about when they first played the ending. And I get why some people are, are like gut reaction to the ending is negative because it doesn't allow you to um, react emotionally the way you want it to, right? Everybody that knew Aerith was going to die, they're like, let me react emotionally. Let me cry. Let let me see the burial. Let me, let me feel all this. And the game's like, no, I'm not going to let you feel it because Cloud's not feeling it. So I'm not going to let you feel it either. <laughs> Like, that's kind of like what I think they did. It's, it's, it's uh, kind of mean, but it could have amazing payoff in part three if they capitalize on it. That's, I think, what they're going for. They're, they're, they're like robbing, of, robbing us of that emotional weight that we wanted to feel. We wanted to be like, oh, it's so sad. Let me, let me cry at her burial. We, like, we wanted that. We had expectations. Like, we went into it with expectations of what they should do. And uh, and they're like, no, sorry, <laughs> we're doing our own thing. Right, Shadow Lancer, I think that's most people. Most people weren't able to feel the emotional weight because they were like, oh, wait, is she dead? Is she alive? Is she dead? For me, if you guys watch my stream, I did emotionally break down because I never for a moment thought that she was alive. I think you guys can tell that from my stream. Like, to me, she was dead. Like, I knew she was dead. Um, So the moment... Aerith's theme starts up in the Genova battle. If you guys watched back the, the stream, I literally fall apart. Like I have a hard time even fighting Genova because I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't focus. I was so sad and 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 distraught. Um, she'd been dead for, from day one. Um, so for me, like it was never a question. So I got to experience that emotional weight. So I feel bad. I feel bad for people that didn't feel it because they were just so soaked up in like the questions of it all. But to me, it just, it didn't happen that way. Um, for me, I was like, I mostly understood what they were going for from the moment it happened enough where I was able to be like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. This is, this is depressing as shit. But the funny part is retroactively, it's 10 times more depressing than I thought it was the first playthrough. It's so much sadder. Like it's, it's tragic how sad it is. It's so much worse. Got to go check on the homies now. No worries, Mixty Matt. Oh, God, I, I bawled at Aerith's trial, Zubachan. Yeah, I bawled. That was rough. That was some rough, sh rough shit. Yeah, it, it, if you guys want to go watch Why are we still here? <laughs> me suffer. Just if suffer. you guys want to go watch me suffer, go watch the last stream night, at the very end. I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. Body I've lost. The comrades I've lost won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? I'm gonna make them give back our past. Thank you. Oh my god, why would you watch that 20 times? I don't know if I can even watch that again. I watched it once, and I think I need time away from that scene. Okay, we need to lighten the mood. <laughs> Good, that's uh, cryptic. I think you're right. I think we do need to lighten the mood. <laughs> During a final fantasy battle. Oh no, why would you do this? Level 15 Yuffie versus level 13 Aerith.
They reset at the start of each season, Mixy Matt. Yep. It's a Final Fantasy X season, because we're about to start Final Fantasy X on Sunday. All Aerith. right. Well, she did. How dare you. How dare you, Bebop. All right. I tried to tell a joke about Julius Caesar, but it was all over the place. I guess you could say the joke was Roman. Like roaming, Roman. Keep it up! Thank Fight. you. I'll do my best. Where do mermaids go to see movies? The dive-in. Did you hear about the musician who was arrested? She got herself in trouble. So anyway... I'll call you later. Don't call me later. Call me dad. Why does Peter Pan always fly? He never lands. Never cheat in a limbo contest. It's the lowest thing you can do. God damn it, Yuffie. Comedy. Cool. 10,000 plus pom poms for Duroc. You played us like a damn fiddle! Alright, guys, I'm gonna take a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna actually play some Seven Rebirth, and we can keep talking about the ending, of course, and all that. If you guys have any things you wanna bring up, I enjoyed this. This was a great discussion, in my opinion. I hope you guys maybe came out of it in appreciating the ending more because I love the ending. That's me. I love the ending. I understand a lot of people don't. That's fine. Uh, but I hope maybe this discussion uh, helps you to appreciate the ending a little more. The best woman won. Glad to hear it, Mixy Matt. I'm so happy we uh, got to finally discuss this, Drew. I definitely appreciate it more with having this conversation. Glad to hear it, Zarkana. Glad to hear it. What are we going to do tonight for Rebirth? Uh, we are going to finish off Gilgamesh. Um, and I think we are going to maybe do some Gold Saucer dates, potentially. Now I have notes. I didn't know otherwise I've watched you and two others and was still lost until just now. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to help more than the others. Uh, which song do you prefer? Hollow Promises to Keep? Promises to Keep, Cryptic. I really, really love Promises to Keep. It brings me back to Final Fantasy VIII 9, especially. It feels very old school. Uh, I think it's because it has a, uh, you know, a woman vocalist. I, I personally way prefer when Final Fantasy games have a lyrical song done by a female artist. It just feels more classic to me. I have no one in my life to discuss this with, so this was great. Glad to hear it, Care Bear. I think I'll probably archive this uh, and put it on YouTube for anybody that wants to, to watch it. Promises is way better, in my opinion. It also has so much meaning. I I, I, I think that Katase came out uh, recently and said that it's really about her saying farewell to all of her, her party members, her friends. It's not just about Cloud. It's not just about Zack. It's about all of them. Um, and that feels very Aerith, which is great. How do you think three will start, Drew? This is really tough, actually, because they they have a hard a hard start here. It was really easy, in my opinion, with part two. I think all of us were like so sure, right? We were like, yeah, they're gonna start at Nibelheim. They're gonna do the Nibelheim flashback. It's an it's an amazing way to start part two. We all knew it, and it's what they did. Outside of the Zach thing, of course. So how did they start part three? If they want to start it with a bang, it starts in a northern crater. They go right to the northern crater. And, and Cloud hands off the Black Materia. But that kind of removes what could be a really dark period at the start of the game where Cloud has the Dark Materia. It changes him, the way he treats everybody, the way he battles. The way he battles would be interesting to see that be different. Um, so I think that could be really cool. I want, I want him to have the Black Materia for a little while. And I want to see his delusion play out when 
whenever somebody tries to bring up Aerith. I want to see him become violent or angry or completely disassociate. I want to see that happen. I think there will be a bone village adjacent area uh, led into the snow uh, place, whatever that place is called. There are so many story beats before Northern Crater. There is, there are. Um, they can move some stuff around, but I, I do think it could be really cool to go to um, Icicle Inn, of course, and and get Professor Gast's backstory and Afalona's backstory. But, like, I, I don't know. Like, what is a satisfying opening to Part 3? I don't think there is one in the same way that Part 2 had one. I think it was a lot easier with Part 2. Um, you know, we still haven't gone to Rocket Town. We still haven't gone to Wutai. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. I think the end obviously makes the most sense because that's where things go after Aerith's death in the original Shadow Lancer. So it makes sense from a timeline perspective for them to go to the inn. But how do you make that like an impressive opening? I, I don't know. I think we see Aerith's burial in 3's opening. I don't think so. I, I highly don't think so on that one, Bebop. I think that ruins the hand that they are holding close. I think if you want to have Eretz Burial mean something now, you have to wait until Cloud's put, put back together. That's the only way it has emotional weight now that makes sense. Otherwise, they should have just done it here. If you're going to put it at the start of Part 3, they should have just done it now, at the end of Part 2. There's no reason to make us wait for Part 3 if it's going to open that way. It has to be later. It has to be when Cloud is forced to understand what actually happened. I just hope they make it so that you can actually use Vincent and Sid as playable party members. They will, Chaos. They 100% will. Yeah. Do you think Zach made it to the remake world? Because I look at flowers from church, don't look dead. I, he's he's in a timeline that's not destined for destruction, arcade guy. We, we have to assume that because the flowers are there. The life stream isn't dry. I'm going to assume there's not a rift in the sky. Is that the prime timeline that all of our other party members are in? I don't know. But um, I do think that he is safe. What timeline is that because they fight Avon Children? I think it's all going to come together. They said this is going to lead up to Avon Children in the interview before Avon Children in theaters. They said that's what this is all about, is taking the entire compilation and making it all make sense. So this will lead into Avon Children. Sid's fighting style will probably be very similar to Sonon's cryptic, if I had to guess. Maybe. Mixy Matt, maybe. Do you think the remake series has delayed Kingdom Hearts 4? No, I do not care, Bear. I think Kingdom Hearts 4 is on track for, like, 2026. And I think 7 Part 3 will be 2027 for the 30th anniversary. Easily, do we do a spoiler cast on 7 Rebirth? I feel like I'm already ready to do it. <laughs> yes. And then after seven is done, they do eight. No, I don't think so. I think uh, I think nine is next and then ten, if I had to guess. Nine is next, then ten. Nine will be a, uh, like a double-A budget remake, and ten will be a high-quality remake. I think ten is going to be a more expensive one, for sure. Yeah, I think 10 is going to go crazy, but not in like a multi-part one. I think it's going to be one game because 10 is incredibly linear and it doesn't need to be expanded upon in the way 7 series was. So I think I think 10 will be a very faithful remake, very high budget, expand a little bit on certain things, but it's going to be very faithful, very linear, just like the original. I never seen Evan Children, but I heard that's what really set up Cloud's edgy personality that he's known for. I would not call I would definitely not call Evan Children's Cloud edgy. Cloud in Evan Children is depressed. Like full on depression. I wouldn't even call him emo either, because emo is not depressed. Like Cloud is in a true 
and justified depression in Advent Children. It's not like, oh, I'm emo. Like, no, he's legitimately depressed. No, no, easily. You're fine, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're not in a good mental state right now. I'm very sorry. Any thoughts if they do a Kingdom Hearts remake? I'll be there day one, Care Bear, that's for sure. <laughs> if they don't remake Nine like Memoria Project, then they are dropping the ball on an amazing concept. They're not, Kyan. I'm just going to tell you right now. They're not, dude. Uh, if you're expecting Nine to look like Memoria Project, I think you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> Kyan, yeah. Just knock that out of your head right now. It's not happening. Not happening. Yeah. I'm expecting Ted to be an MMO. Oh, God. Get ready for the world to, to implode if that happens. No, Cloud is depressed in AC. You can feel it rating off the screen. Yeah. I mean, he is, like, deathly ill. Like, he thinks he's going to die. Because of that, he's, he's reflecting on his failure to save Aerith. He's literally isolated himself in the church, living there by himself, letting, like, literally like a cat gone off to die. Cloud has isolated himself in a church to die in Aerith's church. Like, he is full-on depressed in uh, Advent Children. I'll be disappointed regardless. Alright, you guys. Let's take a uh, short commercial break. I feel for my brother. I mean, it makes sense, though. A lot of people are like, why would he revert? He reverted because he's 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 sick. He thinks he's dying. He's ref reflecting back on his life. He's reflecting back on his failure. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense for his character when he thinks he's going to die to go through that that journey. So I'm actually okay with Cloud being depressed in Advent Children. Especially considering how he bounces back at the end. Have you read any of the Final Fantasy VII novels? I read Traces of Two Past. I'm reading Traces of Two Past now, but I'm not far into it, Care Bear. I want to finish it. I'm reading On the Way to a Smile now. Lots of good info leading to Advent Children. On the Way to a Smile, I'll, I'll have to see if I want to do that one, but I definitely want to finish uh, Traces of Two Past. Definitely. Definitely. 